Hey there good people, my name is Scott and you are watching Sword and Shield Studio. Right now we're going to learn how to take a flat 2D image or photo and give it a dynamic moving 3D effect. Now this works best if you have an image that is a higher resolution than the video you're ultimately going to output and if your subject in the foreground is well separated from the background in the image. With that in mind, let's get right into it. Okay, I'm on the edit page in Resolve where I'm ready to create this 3D effect. The first thing you'll need to do is create a new fusion composition. So in order to do this, right click the media pool on the left of Resolve here and hit new fusion composition from the drop down menu. Here you can name the composition whatever you like. I'm going to name mine 3D effects and set the duration to about 10 seconds. And you can match the frame rate you're working with here. In my case, I'm working in 24 FPS, so I'm gonna leave it at that. And hit Create. Then double click the Fusion Composition you just created in the Media Pool to open it in the Fusion tab. And left click an empty space in your Node tree at the bottom here. Hit shift space and type BG to get the background node. Either click add or hit enter to add that to the node tree. And with this background node still selected, we're going to load the image that we want to make the 3D effect with. So hit shift space again with that background node still selected and type loader to get the loader node and hit enter or click add. And this will bring up a prompt in your OS to load the image with. I'm going to select mine in this folder here. And automatically, Fusion has merged these two nodes. You just have to hook up the merge one to the media out. Now it will show up. And with that merge one selected, you can then resize your image and position it how you like in the frame. And once you have it in a position that you like, which I think that looks good, you can box select that merge and loader node and hit control C and control V on an empty space in the node tree to copy and paste it with all of the settings that you changed intact with the size and position. And then with that second merge node selected, hold shift and bring it between the merge one and media out nodes to connect it. Now, in order to keep organized, I'm going to rename these merge nodes. I'm going to select the first merge one that we created hit F2 on my keyboard to rename it and I will call this background and the second merge that we copied I'm going to select that hit F2 and rename that to subject. Now we have two identical images with the same scale and position properties loaded into our composition above a background that matches the resolution of our video. The next thing we want to do is mask out our subject to separate her from the background so that we can apply separate transformations to our subject and the background. So in order to do this, we will have to mask out our subject merge here by adding a polygon mask to that. Now select the loader node that is feeding into the background merge node and hit two on your keyboard to display it in your viewer. And then left click the polygon node again to make it active. And I'm just going to left click around our subjects here and do a basic trace to mask her out from the background. 
Okay, so once you have your subject properly masked out, left click the loader fed into the subject merge here and hit two on your keyboard. Let's preview what that mask will look like. And then click your polygon node again to make that active and adjust the soft edge value. Just add a little bit of a soft edge to it. And I think that looks pretty good there. And when you are finished adjusting your mask how you like, left click the media out node and hit two on your keyboard to make it active. Next, select your background merge node and hit shift space on your keyboard and type DVE. You're going to add a DVE node between the background and subject to transform and scale the background separate from our subject that we just masked out in the foreground. So one thing to keep in mind is you want to try to keep any changes you make with this DVE node subtle to keep the subject in the background concealed behind the masked out subject in the foreground that we're going to transform separately. You can alter your background however you see fit, but in my case I am going to add a slight rotation by adding keyframes to the X and Y values in our DVE node here. So make sure you're at the beginning of your composition and the timeline with whatever changes you're going to make. And I'm going to just add about five degrees of change to the Y value and maybe a little less with the X and add keyframes to these. And I will scrub to the very end, and I think I will just reverse these by making them negative. And if we scrub over the course of the timeline, you could see it just adds a slight rotating effect to the background. Now, if you look at the edge here, you'll notice there's a little bit of the transparent background being revealed because of the resolution of the image I'm using. You may or may not have this problem depending on the resolution of the image you're using, but if you do, you can correct this by hitting the background merge node and in the inspector change the edges type from canvas to mirror. That will mirror your image along the edges to give the illusion that there is a continuous image here. And it works pretty well as long as you don't push it too far. Now return to the DVE node and make any additional changes you might like. I think in my case I'm going to add a slight Z move to give the illusion that the background is zooming out slightly. So I will make this a value of 1.05 maybe at the maximum. Set a keyframe at the end. And I will make this 1.02 in the beginning see how that looks. Pretty good. It's a pretty subtle effect, but it does add some 3D depth to it. Now, once you're satisfied with the keyframe so you set here and their values, you can open up the spline editor at the top right here and select the DVE node and hit this icon here, zoom to fit. And then you can hold left click and box select all the keyframes you set and hit this smooth icon at the bottom left of the spline editor. Now I'll just add a curve to all of these keyframes to ease the motion in and out. 
give it a more natural look. So we have our background moving. We've added some depth to that. Let's move our subject now by selecting the loader, fed into our subject merge node, and hit shift space, type DVE, and add another DVE node to her. Now, I think since the background is rotating from left to right and zooming out a bit, I would like her to rotate slightly in the opposite direction and zoom in just to give that 3D effect. So I will select the Z move value here, set a keyframe at the beginning of my composition timeline and set a value at the end of my composition of say 0.98 and you can see that has revealed some of the subject in the background so I'll have to move her slightly up to keep the illusion. And I think it really looks good without any rotation, but I'm going to add it anyway, just to see what it looks like. And just rotate it slightly. Looking at that, I think it looks pretty good. And I will do the same thing with her. I'll go, since I'm satisfied with my keyframes here, I'll go to the spline editor and select my DVE2 node. Hit zoom to fit here. Box select those keyframes and hit the smooth icon at the bottom left. Now, if I play this back, we should have a nice smooth 3D effect. Just like that. That does it for this tutorial. I hope that after watching this video, you feel more comfortable taking your own 2D photos and giving him some 3D depth using this technique. If you do, please consider subscribing to the channel where I upload a video just like this one every week. Like the video if you like this one. Leave a comment if you have a question. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.